Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I have here the uh, CTL2GO PC, um, but I'm actually just using it as an example machine right now. It's um, a touchscreen tablet, and I wanted to show you some software that runs on touchscreen touch tablets. Now, normally this comes with something called uh, the Quick Easy Bit software. I'll show you that real quick. Um, and that's sort of a uh, program launcher that's designed to make uh, Windows a little bit easier to use for touchscreen devices, but for the most part, it's really just about launching programs. It's more of a replacement for the Windows Start menu than anything. You have a couple of tabs here for games, uh, desktop, uh, etc., to show you what's going on on your computer. You can see the animations take a little while to load. I think that might be because of the uh, integrated uh, GMA3150 graphics or the Intel Atom uh, uh, process here. here. But, you know, it's, it's fairly attractive. It works reasonably well but it doesn't really offer much uh, different from what you would get on a typical Windows experience. Uh, Windows 7 does include some touchscreen optimizations. So, for example, it's got a larger taskbar with nice big icons. Um, but when you want to do certain things in the operating system, like even just search using the uh, tool, it brings up this on-screen keyboard, which, depending on where it's located, I mean, it, it might block your view. So, say I want to search for Notepad. I can't really tell if I mistyped anything until I see Notepad come up. Um, and the keyboard is sort of clunky, it takes up part of the screen, it's resizable, which is great, but you have to then manually resize it and move it around. So um, I decided to try installing an application that's been out for a little while called Thinix Touch here. And this is a demo version. The uh, full version costs about $50 for the consumer license. And it's not just a replacement for the uh, uh, start menu or for the uh, keyboard, but sort of a replacement for the Windows shell in certain ways. So you can see it launches here. It looks a little bit like that quick software. You've got a list of icons. You've got um, different tabs. So you can go to Office, Games, Entertainment accessories. And you'll notice, uh, especially under entertainment here, it actually, um, by default, it'll load up certain icons for you, including links to websites like Hulu or Pandora or TV.com, um, as well as Windows Media Player. Um, same thing here, uh, we've got Bing and YouTube and Google and Facebook, as well as Firefox. So, and even under Office, uh, it noticed that I don't have Microsoft Office installed here, so instead of a link to Outlook, it includes Gmail. So um, it's kind of interesting how it automatically detects what's installed on your computer and then uh, substitutes. So it would have installed Office icons if I had Office, and it didn't. Um, on the side here, you'll see that it's got a wireless meter um, and a power meter. You can tap on those for information. And again, it brings up its own applications instead of just the default Windows apps. But what's really interesting here, I think, is the way that it works when it launches programs. So let's go ahead and launch WordPad here. And say I want to type something. Um, I can bring up the default Windows keyboard there, unless I disable it. Or I can tap this screen to bring up the uh, keyboard that comes with um, the Thinix Touch software. And this is actually a much better keyboard, but more importantly, it actually resizes the window automatically, so the keyboard just takes up the bottom of the screen. Now, this is a pretty bad example here because what we're looking at is a 1024 by 600 pixel display, and when you open WordPad and it's got this big ribbon at the top, you're certainly left with very little screen real estate. Um, that changes, of course, if you rotate the screen. And bring the keyboard up again. Doesn't seem to want to come up now. There we go. WordPad. Okay. There we go. So it took a little while, but uh, I finally got it to work. And that's the thing is, um, I've noticed that it's pretty nifty in terms of what it's capable of doing, but it can be a little bit slow and unresponsive at times on this particular tablet. Um, but once it's up, this keyboard is actually a very nice keyboard. This keyboard 
is much easier to type on than the Windows keyboard. Um, now, there's a couple of typos in there because it doesn't, uh, like the iPhone or Google Android default keyboard, include uh, automatic spell checking. But overall, it's, uh, it's a pretty nice way to enter text and it makes the experience of using uh, Windows much more pleasant on a tablet because it automatically resizes the window, the keyboard's not in the way of other things on the screen and so forth. Now that said, when I make the win uh, keyboard go away, the window doesn't automatically resize itself. So I have to tap that to make it go full screen again. So it's not quite a perfect experience. Um, let's go ahead and rotate the screen again. And you can see it takes a moment when uh, rotating the display for things to sort of catch up here. So let's go ahead and open the Firefox web browser. And you'll see it's, it's going to launch, you know, the regular version of Firefox here. I think I might have launched it twice by accident. And again, you know, I entered the text area there. I want to enter a URL, so tap the keyboard button. Wait for something to happen. There it goes. For some reason it exited there. Okay, that time for some reason when I made the keyboard disappear, it automatically resized the window. So it's a little bit inconsistent, it seems like at times, in how it behaves. Um, let's try this again. Keyboard. Keyboard is up. Windows resized. So I can scroll through everything without missing anything. Make the keyboard go away, and it scales back. So uh, that actually surprised me. The first time I tried the software, it did not do that. Um, typing, exit, and now it's full screen again. So maybe it's just in portrait mode that I have a problem with that. Bring up the keyboard. Exit the keyboard. Okay, so it seems that the problem is in portrait mode, not necessarily in landscape mode. And that is why I didn't experience, or I experienced it before, because I was trying it in uh, landscape mode. So uh, it seems like there might still be a couple of kinks to work out, but overall uh, it's a nice little application that does make uh, the experience of using Windows a lot better um, by giving you a better keyboard, a nice program launcher. Um, you'll notice it also uh, gives you sort of these drop-down menus so that if I'm using an application, like say Firefox is open, I can see a short list of other applications here without going back to the main screen. So um, there you go. At, at its core, the computer's still running Windows 7. The uh, user experience is still similar to Windows 7. You can run any Windows 7 applications, but at the same time, you've got a better keyboard, better touch experience, um, still support for multi-touch scrolling, uh, side to side, up and down. Um, you've got larger, by default, larger um, toolbars and other icons here, which on something like a slate with a 1024 by 600 display might be a bad thing because it takes away a lot of your screen real estate. But um, for a, something with a higher resolution screen, I can see how that would come in handy. And you do have support for uh, pinch to zoom in uh, Firefox, Internet Explorer, and a number of other applications. And that's because of uh, native capabilities in Windows for that. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a quick look at the Phoenix Touch software for Slates. Uh, it's uh, available for about $50 or you can download it for free and try it for 30 days first.